is with, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you today Dr. Marta Rendon. Dr. Rendon is the founder and medical director at the Dermatology and Aesthetic Center in Boca Raton. Dr. Rendon is board certified in both dermatology and internal medicine. She is the former chief of dermatology at the Cleveland Clinic. She has been voted Professor of the Year at the University of Miami. She is the past president and founder of the American Society of Cosmetic Dermatology and Aesthetic Surgeons. She is a physician teacher who teaches other physicians on the latest cosme cosmetic dermatology procedures. At Boca Raton Community Hospital, she holds the distinction of drawing the largest audience that we have had in the past 10 years for her lecture on female hair loss. We welcome Dr. Rendon as she educates us on this serious topic and, of course, timely one of sun safety in Florida for all of us who love the sun and love Dr. Rendon. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to work with the hospital and all the activities. And as she said, I'm, I'm always there to contribute and because this is one of my love. I love to teach and I love to do community service and, and get the word out there. And it's not a coincidence that we're talking about skin cancer awareness today and skin cancer and photo protection because May is the Skin Cancer Awareness Month. And the same thing I'm doing here today, there's hundreds of dermatologists all over the country developing and creating community outreach programs to teach about skin cancer and photo protection. And we're going to talk about when you leave this morning, I want you to at least be aware. You're going to learn about the types of skin cancer. You're going to learn what we do with those types of cancer. And more important, we're going to talk about photo protection and one of the topics that for all of you should gain a lot of importance is the whole tanning beds and what is the government doing about it, what is the American Academy of Dermatology doing about it, because it has become a big issue in, in, uh, in our culture now. So why is it important? Why is it important that we learn about skin cancer and learn to recognize moles, learn to recognize different lesions in your face? Well, one of the reasons is because one in five Americans develop skin cancer. So we have a group here. One out of five of you is going to develop skin cancer. It's a reality. Every four hours, an American dies of either a basal cell carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma. And every hour, an American dies of melanoma. I get goosebumps just reading these statistics. So that is why this is so important. Now, very simple, three types of skin cancer. The one that we worry about because it's the one that actually kills people is the melanoma. Melanoma is the bad word. Squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma are completely curable. They're surgically removed, and if we catch them early, it's not a problem. If you have surgery, you'll have a little scar. Uh, we can treat them with topical treatments. So these two, the idea is to catch them early as well as melanoma, but melanoma is the one that's life-threatening. What are the risk factors? Risk factors are very important because there are certain people that are going to be at a higher risk than other people. If you're what we call type 1, if you're freckled, redhead, you've seen those pictures of those kids that walk around with lots of freckles, redhead, light eyes, that's type 1 skin. And those people with lighter skin complexion have a higher risk of developing skin cancer at some point in their lives. So for your children and your grandchildren, you have to teach them sun protection because we develop skin cancer due to the lifetime exposure to the sun. So that's why it's so important. Light skin color, the amount of sun exposure that you get throughout your lifetime. I see patients, they're in their 50s and existing. They say, no, I don't, I don't go out anymore. I wear my sunscreen, my hat. I said, tell me what happened from when you were one till you were 20. And they say, oh, yeah, I had three blistering sunburns. My mom used to put me at the beach, and I rose, and I'd come back red blistering. So it is a cumulative exposure to the sun that gives you the risk of skin cancer. So that's very important. If you have a family history 
of skin cancer, and that's part of our intake when we see patients. We always ask them, anybody in your family, because if anybody in your family has had one of these, you're at higher risk. Almost 50% with it develop more within five years, and if you have a lot of moles, I call them my moly patients. If they have tons and tons and tons of moles, you have to be careful because there's an entity called dysplastic neva syndrome, which is people that have a lot of abnormal moles. And there's a belief that maybe these patients might be at risk of developing melanoma from an abnormal mole. Now, let's talk about photoprotection and melanoma. Does sunlight contribute to melanoma risk? Look at what happens of the lifetime risk of developing melanoma. In the 1930s, we only had about one per 1,500 people in the United States that would develop melanoma. Look at what's happened to this graph. Right now, we think it's an epidemic. This is going so high, we are diagnosing. Sometimes I have three and four melanomas in a week. It's scary. One of the things is that maybe we're diagnosing them earlier and we are being better clinicians and picking up on these cancers and being able to save lives by doing that. Because in the year 2000, it was already 20 per 1,500 that was developing melanoma. Now it's a lot higher. Now, how about in terms of uh, types of cancer? Let's look at this in men. It's the five leading, leading cause of cancer. It's a very common cancer. How about in women? It's the sixth leading uh, cause of cancer after breast, lung, colon, bladder, and then we have melanoma here. So this is very, very, very important. Now, the melanoma, thank God, is less common than the basal cell and the squamous cell carcinoma. Almost 100,000 cases per year and more aggressive and like we mentioned, 8,000 uh, 8, deaths early. Now, this is a common cancer. And if you see, I mean, you, every time a famous, uh, either a movie star or a political figure gets skin cancer, the media picks up on it and my phone doesn't stop ringing because that alerts people that, you know, this is a common issue. So uh, we see he's had a lot of problems with his skin. He's got a lot of skin cancer. And uh, how do we... This is what I want you, out of everything that you hear today, this is what I want you to remember. The way we diagnose melanoma is very simple. We call it the ABCD, which means asymmetry, border, color, and diameter. Okay, when you look at a mole, first of all, you want to see if that mole is symmetric or not. If you were to cut the mole in half, like this one, both sides are symmetrical. If it has an asymmetrical shape, that's one of the things that makes us uh, be suspicious about skin cancer. The border, nice even borders versus uneven edges and uh, uneven borders. That's also significant. The third thing, color, an even shade, an even color. That's 